I, I suddenly see this window. It zooms out to the right, and there's a window. And the window just flew open, like the, the window panes just flew open. And there's a breath of fresh air, and then the candle comes to life again. So it's almost like, you know, you guys are um, the element of fire, and you need oxygen in order for you to ignite, in order for you to flicker again, in order for you to shine. And whatever you do, I feel like it might be a health situation where there might be, because, you know, the, the, the flame indicates vitality. It indicates our energy level. It indicates our health, our energy, and our vitality. And if you are into, you know, more Eastern, um, uh, I, I guess like more Eastern, like holistic medicine, if you're into that, it indicates the chi, the life force. And uh, I don't know if there has been, you know, blockages when it comes to the flow of oxygen, not being able to breathe, not being able to get enough uh, fresh air, not being in an environment where you have fresh air. There might be, you know, air pollution and things like that. Or you might not have been physically active enough to, you know, build up your lung capacity or whatever the situation is. There is a blockage when it comes to some type of energy. And I feel like it could be oxygen deprivation or just energy or just, you know, allowing new opportunities to come into your life. You might have been resisting it. You might not have had the time. You might not have prioritized your health. And health is, we're looking at things in a more holistic way way is not just your physical health it's your emotional health it's your spiritual health as well so I, I definitely feel like you know the next two weeks needs to be all about your holistic health okay taking care of ourselves doing things that make us feel good and researching a lot of the time Sagittarius you go through the day you go through the motions and in a way, I feel like you guys are such believer of um, um, that, you know, if it's meant to be, it's going to come in for me and then everything will work out. You know, that, that very carefree attitude, which is great and which is what, you know, people really love about you and which is what I really love about you guys. Um, that devil may care that, um, you know, what will be will be attitude but I, I definitely feel like there are times where you need to do your own research in order to find new opportunities so for example if you've been wanting to go for that hike and you you live in a more metropolitan area and you're just like oh, I wish I you know can find a good hiking trail or I wish I can find some a gym I wish I could go mountain climbing and you kind of let it sit without doing the research to find the exact location, to find out how far it is. Like taking the initiative to, to do it. I, I feel like that's what has been lacking um, this year. So getting online, doing your preliminary research so that you can find things to do to bring you more excitement, more joy in your life. So don't put things on the back burner anymore. You kind of need to air things out, put it on the forefront so that the universe can come in with that whiff of new fresh air and reignite your passion, okay? The second message that I saw was, um, I see a post, in, it's like um, at an intersection, but it's like a, a road, it's not unpaved, it's a dirt road, so it seems to me like, you know, it's from a different time, and there's like a post in the middle, and there are those... Um, I guess signposts, they're saying um, one is pointing um, to the left, one is pointing to the right, and then I see this woman, she's holding a map, and she's trying to figure out which way to go, and then she, she like turns left, and the, the view is still focused on that lamppost. She turns left, and then, you know, many hours pass by, she comes back to that same post, and now she's all like, okay, by process of elimination, I turn left, it didn't work, or I didn't get to my destination, now I'm going to turn right. And so, when I saw that message, I was thinking, you know, if it didn't work the first time, don't give up on it. Keep plugging away at it and figuring out, you know, why didn't it work the first time? Was I misled? Was I reading the signs incorrectly? Or was I just, you know, functioning on this blind faith 
that the universe would deliver without doing my preliminary research, without consulting my map. Because she does have a map, and she's relying on the signs from the, the this really outdated post, right? And it's pointing her in different direction, and she clearly sees that it's pointing her in different directions. And she takes one, and then, you know, she wastes time, and then she has to backtrack, and then she has to take the other route. What if there weren't just two routes? What if there were, like, seven different routes? Are you going to waste your time going through the motions, going through the seven different routes just to find out that six of them were incorrect and that you have to, you know, you finally get to the seventh one and that's the right one. It wastes a lot of time. And so I definitely feel there's a need for you to be a little bit more methodical when it comes to your planning, to be a little bit more systematic, okay? And it is... Once again, it's really good for you guys to rely on, you know, blind faith. It's, it's really good that you have this very carefree, this very open attitude when it comes to, you know, the way you do things. But when it comes to the important things that requires a lot of uh, logistical work behind the scenes in order to bring it to fruition, you need to take it upon yourself to do the necessary research so that you can get it done the first time rather than wasting your time, everybody else's time, and having to redo things, having to, you know, backtrack, having to retrace your steps. And I feel like, you know, this is something that is definitely, um, I see a lot of like learning through trial and errors. And I feel like you don't even need to reinvent the wheels. You just need to look at, take your time, be patient and really sit and look at what has been done before. Why didn't it work? So that, and, and this is not just, you know, from your own personal experience. This is more like looking at what other people have done. Why didn't it work the first time? And taking a different route, okay? Learning from others, learning from past mistakes, learning as well to be more systematic, to do the necessary research in order to get things done right the first time. Okay? So, I'm not saying that to shame you or chastise you, but I, I feel like, you know, this, uh, this whole process about tracing your steps and redoing things, I feel that it doesn't need to be that way. So, what I'm seeing in this reading, first of all, is... Um, you're making things happen in your life. You're like getting your hands dirty. You're like, I'm not waiting around on this situation anymore. I'm going to take initiative and I'm going to get things done. So you definitely have the passion, the drive, and the ambition. And I definitely feel like in the past, things might have been, not all of you, things might have been slapped together. Okay, it's done. Moving on to the next thing. You want to look at the quality of what you're bringing forth in, or, or bringing out into the world. You want to look at the quality. You want to make sure that whatever you do is foolproof. You want to make sure that, you know, if it has your name on it, then it needs to, it needs to be a representation of your perfectionism, your standards, and it is a piece of you, and you want to bring your best forward, okay? Um, so the time to, you know, slap things together, dash assignments off in the, you know, the, the late hours of the night, those days are over. We are at a point where we have to be more accountable for the things that we bring forth into the world and make sure that the quality of it is a reflection of us, of our capabilities, of our ability to get things done, not only in a timely manner, but to be, to bring forth the best quality because it is a reflection of you, okay? Um, so that's the what I'm getting here with those messages, with those images. I feel that you're coming to a point where you are becoming a lot more self-sufficient. You guys are one of the most, you Aquarius, you guys are one of the most independent signs of the Zodiac. You like adventure, you like new things. Okay, and like you're always down for a good time. You're always down to try something new. 
even though you might say like, oh, I don't, that doesn't look like, you know, it's something that is my cup of tea. I, it doesn't look that great. You're still willing to try it. The Aquarius might not be willing to try it. But you're willing to always try something as long as it's new. And um, I also feel like as independent as you are, there are times too where you might be too reliant on other people. And I don't know wh why that's coming in, but what I'm getting is you don't want to make a mistake. And I feel like you're crowdsourcing. You're asking people, what would you do with this? What would you do with that? And I feel, though, the information is out there. You just have to know where to look. And I feel like you have to be careful about asking the right people. Asking people that might be experts in their field rather than just some stranger that has no prior knowledge of this one thing that we're doing. And so asking people who might be experts, asking people whose advice and opinion that you really trust rather than asking people that you have an emotional connection to that you trust on an emotional level but they are not able to give you, you know, proper advice on whatever technical issues you might have. Does that make sense? Coming to the right sources, figuring out the right sources, finding the right sources, and that requires you being self-sufficient to do the preliminary research on your own so that you can identify who to ask, what sources to consult, and how to get things done. So there are a lot of things here that indicates to me, you know, technical aspects of things that needs to be reworked, redone, and I feel there is definitely a, a big paradigm shift that needs to happen from your end, and a lot of it has to do with, you know, taking ownership of the things that we do, the things that we put our, uh, our resources, our energy, our time to, the things that we bring forth into the world, taking ownership of that and making sure that it is the best and the most foolproof that it can be because it is a reflection of us. So the paradigm shift here is with the tower. And this is, you know, some major, major shakeups. And I pulled out three cards to clarify the tower to signify, you know, to, to get more clarification on what it means. And what's standing above it is the Nine of Cups. The Nine of Cups, this is almost like that sense of um, whatever will be, will be, okay? And, um, you know, doing things without, like, um, a sense of, like, actions and consequences. Doing things without weighing, thoroughly weighing out the potential pitfalls and hoping for the best. Because this is wishful thinking. This is a wish card. It's also indicating to me wishful thinking as well. And so the three cards I have here that clarifies the tower is we have the Seven of Cups. No longer being disillusioned, no longer being fooled, no longer living in this carefree fool's paradise. Things are getting serious. We have as well the Justice card. And the Justice card, this is the card for Libra, weighing out the pros and cons, as well as crowdsourcing, needing to, you know, get the opinions and the um, consultations from other people, hearing the noise, and it's really drowning out, you know, common sense. Okay? And we have the Empress, you taking ownership of a situation, knowing something inside and out, being very, very confident that you have consulted the appropriate authorities, the appropriate sources, the appropriate people in order for you to be very sure about your ideas, your beliefs, and, you know, the course of action that you are planning to take. I feel for some of you... There has been like um, an authority figure in your life. So there has been. This is past energy. Um, someone who was very, very critical of you. Okay, someone that you try very, very hard to please. But for whatever reason, this person, it, it, it's, it's almost like you were very fearful of making mistakes with this person because they might have been harsh with their words. They might have been harsh with their judgment. They might have been very hard to please. They might have been very perfectionistic. And I feel like, you know, your carefree attitude, and which I love, which a lot of people love, um, they dampen that side of you. You know, their, their overcritical energy really made you feel like 
it, it just kind of like wears down your self-esteem. That's what it feels like to me. And you feel almost like, and, and there's this tug of war too. You want to please this person. You want to constantly please this person. And um, you don't need to please this person. They are very proud of you. They will not verbally say, I'm proud of you, Sagittarius, and pat you on the back or rub your head or, you know, uh, buy you candy, whatever it is. Like, like they, they're, they're not going to tell you verbally, I'm very proud of you. But they are very proud of you. And so whatever you do, you don't need other people's approval. You just need to stand in your truth. You just need to know and feel confident that what you're doing is the right thing because you have done the consultation. You have done the research. You have perused the scrolls and the books and the uh, database and the libraries. Um, you know, you, you have done the, the preliminary legwork to make sure that you expand your knowledge, to make sure that you become an expert in your field, to make sure that you have read up on everything you need to know so that you can do your work well okay so so that you can do things well and so I definitely feel there is a major sense of pride and achievement coming through for the next two weeks where you're stepping into this sense of self-confidence where it's no longer about crowdsourcing it's no longer about you know taking baby steps to make sure that we have looked at a situation from all perspectives. Now we know. Now we know what we need to do. Now we know how to move forward. Now we know that we are very, very sure about our course of action. So that's what I'm sensing here. Um, for many of you, I feel like there is a reemergence, um, something that you have been doing. Like um, for those of you who are self employed, you might have stopped. You might have put something on the back burner. You might have put like a project, a hobby, a self-employment gig on the back burner. And I feel like the universe is telling you, now it's time to start up again. In the time of Sagittarius, now it's time for you to start up again. So if you have been kind of um, delaying the initiation process, or for example, if you have a business and you're waiting to launch it and somebody tells you, no, it's not the right time, or, you know, it's not going to take off, or they might have been kind of uh, dampen your belief in what you're doing. Now is a good time for you to get confirmation to move forward, and the, the confirmation comes from within. Just the fact that you feel there's this tug, internal tug and pull within you, the, it's the universe urging you and telling you it's the right time. Because we have the sun, which indicates a lot of success that's going to be coming into the picture. Okay, So whatever blockages you've been dealing with, um, self-esteem, mainly self-esteem. And um, I feel you have spent a lot of time laying the groundwork, Okay, working very, very hard laying the foundation, laying the groundwork, waiting for the right opportune moment in order to launch something, in order to start something. And you might have had to go back to the drawing board because there were mistakes or there were things that um, you hadn't looked at clearly. And you have fixed these mistakes. You have, you know, realigned things and reassessed things and, and re-examined things. And so it's time for you to move ahead, and it's time for you to move ahead with confidence, okay? Um, I feel there are a lot of Sagittarius that are coming into this month who might be watching this who are single. And uh, I feel like, you know, you're single, you're happy, you're at a point where you're very, very just, um, you're focusing on you. You have a lot of plans, you have a lot of um, things that you want to do, things that you want to cross off your list I see there's like a bucket list like things I want to see things that I want to um, experience okay things that I want to eat even and so I, I definitely see this aspect about you know having more fun creating the opportunities for you guys to have more fun no longer waiting for people to come in and and you know tell you you want to do this with me you want to try this restaurant you want to you know try this event try this activity you're actively researching to find these opportunities and some of you could be doing it on your own because you're tired of waiting for other people it's been a long process and um, 
people just don't move as fast as you do. And so that can be very aggravating, making a Sagittarius person wait. And I feel like that's what's happening. And you just realize, you know, time is slipping. Life is slipping away from me. So I'm just going to get out there and enjoy life. And who cares who's with me? I could be by myself and I'll be okay. So there's that element here about stepping into your own sense of independence. And it's going to feel really good because it's so in alignment with what the universe has been pushing you to do all along. Okay? Um, so aside from that, what I'm also picking up is... Um, Finances, it's it's all very, very good. Um, I, I, I see money coming through from family members. I see gifts and, you know, exchange of things. And we are in the holiday season, but I, I feel like it's not just Christmas or New Year's. It's more just this <clears throat> exchange of energy between you and family members. Um, and, you know, honestly, you have difficult family members. They're very, very, very stubborn, Okay. And, um, you know, they're not going to listen to you. You, likewise, are not going to listen to them. So there's this power dynamics in family members, with family members, where there is like a, a generational um, gap. And the old generation looks at things in a different way. The young generations look at things in a different way. And so there are major clashes between belief system, between ideologies, between... Just values. There's There are definitely values differences. And it shows up here with the Five of Wands. And this Five of Wands is conflict, not seeing eye to eye. But it's not bitter, um, you know, like uh, malicious conflict. This is just people being people. This is just people who are stubborn, who are going to do what they're going to do. And I feel like, you know, they will strongly be, um, defend their beliefs. So if they don't agree with you, they're not going to keep quiet. They're going to give you their two cents. And so it's perpetual conflict. It goes back and forth, and it's because, you know, if they're younger and you're in a different generation, then they just won't see eye to eye with you. Times change, and, you know, we can agree to disagree. And I feel like that's just the best thing. That's just the best policy. So there's going to be a lot of contact and communication coming through with family. And the bottom line is, I feel like the spread is indicating just the bottom line. There's a lot of love here. Um, you're dealing with people who are just as independ independent as you are. They're independent in their thought. They're also very, very successful. And I feel like, you know, they've paved the way, they've done their preliminary research, they've done the groundwork, and they're very methodical about how to lay out the foundation so that they can succeed in life, and they're seeing the fruits of their labor. And I feel like you look at them, and you're just like very proud of them, very, very happy for them. And you're just like, I'm going to do that too. And I'm going to follow in their footsteps. And I'm going to, you know, pick their brains and see what they're doing. And what you're realizing as well is it didn't come about as just a fluke. Like, you know, it, it wasn't just good luck that, was, that, this, that fell on their lap. Behind their success is many, many years, many, many months of planning, of um, preparation, of being very methodical. And keeping things, you know, under wraps so that when the big reveal happens, everyone is just shocked, okay? So learning to be a little bit more discreet with our ideas. Learning as well to not o overestimate our strengths, okay? Overestimate our strengths and underestimate our weaknesses, I feel like you have to come into this sense of like self-knowledge, self-knowing, self-awareness to know what areas do I need to work on? Why didn't it work the first time? I see some of you, you had a test or something um, to, that you had to, you know, really prepare for. And I feel almost like you prepared for it. Like, for example, you gave yourself four months to prepare for it. The first month, you're very, very optimistic, and you were very diligent. And then towards the last month, the fourth month, you, you ran out of steam. 
and so you put it on the back burner and then when the you have to take the test you might have failed it and it's telling you you know don't give up on that it's telling you as well you know learning from past mistakes what did we do wrong and I also feel like you were consulting the wrong people you were getting advice from the wrong people and so we kind of need to sit still and, and figure out, you know, these are my weaknesses. I need to improve upon them. And these are my strengths, and these are the strengths that I need to emphasize. So really getting into the sense of, you know, the high priestess, self-awareness, self-knowledge, self-reliance, and digging a little bit deeper to really figure these things out, okay? The other thing that I am sensing as well is um, for some of you, your relationship status situation might change, okay? So if you have been single, I feel like there is potential for you to connect with a new love interest. And I feel like it's something new. So if you have been single, there's a switcheroo here where you might be, you know, in a relationship. And I have here the Nine of Pentacles. In the reverse, and I have the sun, which is somebody reaching out, contact, communication, and even being in a position where you have a lot of options. So we have here nine of cups, lots of options, and people potentially vying for your attention. Five of wands, okay, competition. So I definitely feel there are quite a lot of people that in your midst that are interested in you. You could be single, you could be married, whatever your relationship status is, it's not going to stop these people from coming into the picture. And your energy as the Empress, very beautiful. This is like somebody who's loving, caring, beautiful, inside and out. You guys have really big hearts. And um, I also feel like, you know, you make yourself available for people, like you care about people. And... People find you very approachable. People find your charm, your friendliness very, very enticing. So I feel like, you know, you are definitely loved and admired, okay? And people are very, very drawn to your energy. This is very open energy. This is not somebody who's petty, not somebody who's resentful. This is also somebody who's physically very attractive. And so, you know, love is on the offing for you guys. And I, I also feel like um, for those who have left a relationship that was significant, you know, like a marriage, a partnership, um, a long-standing karmic relationship, you've been back and forth and you found yourself single and now you're just like, wow, I really enjoy the single life. And I feel like there are people just clamoring for you because they're, attracted or drawn to your energy whenever we are confident whenever we are happy by ourselves that's when people naturally you know will be very drawn to us so i feel like there might be a lot of sagittarius people who are watching this who are single who have left relationships who are dating again and they're having a screaming good time so allow that breath of fresh air to come in to reignite things in your life your vitality, take better care of your health, and find opportunities for you to get more oxygen, whatever that means. Going for a hike, going to, you know, look at some sites, like doing outdoorsy things, uh, gardening even, whatever that means to you, allow that fresh, uh, that breath of fresh air and fresh energy to come into the picture, okay? So I'm going to leave it at that, Sagittarius, and um, I will see you in January for your uh, weekly readings.